Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video today, we're gonna to be creating a 3D printed part that has a captive nut in it. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is learning how to design our part, but also pause the 3D print. For this video, I am gonna be using Fusion and I am using a Creality K1 Max. If you are looking to purchase from Creality, we are an affiliate, so I'll leave a link in the description below and that will help out the channel. Depending on what you're buying, there are deals from time to time, but uh, just keep in mind that we are a Creality affiliate, but I'm not trying to sell you a printer in this video. It just happens to be the one that I'm using. So what are we doing and why is this important? Well, a lot of times when we create our 3D printed parts, the threads are going to be a weak spot, especially as the parts get smaller. We can, of course, tap or we can use melt-in inserts, but being able to pause your prints at some specific layer during the print process is extremely handy to put things like magnets or embedded components inside of a 3D print. So we're going to learn how to design our part today, as well as how to pause the K1 and K1 Max printers. So to get started, the first thing that we want to do is start our new design. We need to understand the sizes that we're dealing with, and I'm using a half by 13 nut, and we're going to start by measuring the outside hex size. Now, measured on this specific one, I've got, I think, a grade 5 or a grade 8 nut here, measures 0.925 inches. Now, we're going to convert everything to metric because we're going to have to deal with our layer lines and those tolerances, and that converts to 23.495 millimeters, roughly 23 and a half. So when we get started on our first sketch, we're going to go to Create, and we're going to select our Polygon tool. I'm using the Circumscribed Polygon mistake. I'm using the circumscribed polygon, but honestly, it doesn't matter as long as you can create one with six points. If yours is coming in with any different number here, then make sure that you just change it to six. And I wanna get the top and the bottom horizontal. So we're gonna use a horizontal vertical constraint just to make sure. Then for my sketch dimensions, we need to give it a dimension from top to bottom. And again, this is gonna be our measured value, 23.495 millimeters. Now, if you have ever 3D printed something and tried to make another physical part fit, you'll know that it doesn't generally come out to be the exact right size. There are tolerances involved, generally plus or minus 0.2 millimeters, and you'll have to play around with your own 3D printer to figure this out. In this case, we're going to be using this as sort of the basis, and then we're going to offset it. Using the offset, I'm going to go out a distance of 0.5 millimeters. This is going to be loose enough that the nut should drop in easily, even if the part gets printed undersized. But we can make it a bit tighter, again, playing around with your own 3D printers. If you want a press fit, knowing that the material is going to be warm, generally around 0.1 millimeters or 0.05 millimeters will be a pretty tight fit, assuming your printer prints to the exact right size. Now I found with the K1 Max, it generally prints a little bit undersized. That's also true for other printers. And you just kind of have to, again, play around with your own printer to figure out what works. Then we're gonna double click on this inside edge and convert it to construction. Next, we need to account for a hole where the bolt is gonna pass through. Now, in this case, I'm gonna make this a little bit oversized. Measuring it comes out to about 0.56 inches, which is, a little bit around 14 and a half millimeters. I'm gonna make it 16 millimeters just to give us plenty of space for that bolt to pass through. And next, we're gonna need an outside diameter. This is gonna be 50 millimeters, just a nice round number. Also note that if things start to get a little too busy on the inside of your parts, you can always right click on these values and toggle them to a radius value. And that will just put the leader line on the outside based on those default settings. Next, we're gonna use a center point rectangle and we're just gonna place one over here, use horizontal constraint from the origin and then add our dimensions. Note that we do have shortcut keys. Dimension is D on the keyboard. I'm gonna make this eight by, looks like 20 will work. And then we'll say finish sketch. Now, this is the point where we really need to start to understand our printing process and the slicer settings that we're gonna be using. Now, it may be a little bit counterintuitive to worry about those at this point, but we have to understand exactly how much height we're dealing with in layer lines, and that will allow us to account for the space that the nut needs to fit into. So the first thing I'm gonna do is extrude. I'm gonna pick these three areas here, and we're gonna begin extruding up. 
generally the base thickness is not going to affect us in terms of the space that the nut needs, but we do want to understand how many layers we're adding to the bottom. So in my printing process, generally that means the first layer is 0.28 millimeters, and then we're going to add, and I'm going to put these in brackets, 0.2, which is going to be my default layer line, and I'm going to add another eight layers and hit enter. Now this should be, if everything worked out correctly, 1.88 millimeters. So I on the keyboard, if we want to inspect, and it looks like 1.88, we can see it over here as well. So that works out great. Let's bring the sketch back. And next we want to extrude the area where the nut is going to be. So E on the keyboard, hold down the left mouse button, and we want to select our profiles. Now, if you, you can also just rotate this around and begin to pull it up. And notice that by default, it wants to cut it away. Now, in reality, we should start from an object, which is going to be the top face of what we've already printed. And then we're going to be building up in 3D and joining them together. The reason that we're doing this is because we already know at this point that we've got nine layers. We've got our 0.28 first layer and then eight additional 0.2 millimeter layers. At this point, now we have to account for the overall height of the nut. Now measured, this is 0.54 inches, which converted to metric is 13.716 millimeters. This is where it starts to get a little tricky. We need to not only account for how many layers that's going to be, but also additional tolerance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's go ahead and just bring a calculator over here. I'm going to take that 13.716 millimeters, and I'm going to add a half a millimeter gap, kind of like we did for the hex shape. That brings me to 14.2 and some change. So I'm gonna take that 14.2 and divide it by my 0.2 millimeter layer lines, and that gives me 71 layers. Plus the nine on the base, that's 71 layers, plus the nine is gonna take us to layer 80, and that's where we wanna pause. So now I can add that number here. That's gonna be 14.2 millimeters. And then we can extrude one more time. We're gonna go ahead and take this profile and this, actually include that as well. We're going to start from the top of this object and we can add whatever we want here. And in this case, we can add, let's say two millimeters and join it together. Actually, that's the offset box. Sorry. We're going to go distance two millimeters, join it together. So now if we take a look at a section analysis, we should see that open cavity and then it's going to sort of work its way back over here. Now this is gonna present a problem for us when we go to 3D print. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Now we can go ahead and extrude this portion here. We're gonna go up to object, join it together, add a fillet, F on the keyboard, go ahead and grab all these edges and just round it off. And then we'll go to our pattern, circular array. We'll pattern the extrude and the fillet to pick a circular reference, and I'm gonna add five for this one. So now everything is ready to go. All we need to do is send this to a slicer. Now you can, of course, use the manufacturing workspace and you can slice it directly in Fusion. Since I am using the K1 Max, I am going to just use the Creality Print. It seems to work pretty well for me. I'm gonna go ahead and call this Captive Nut, right click, and save as mesh. So if you're doing this and exporting it, you can send to a 3D print utility directly from Fusion. That will open the K1 Max's uh, default slicer, in this case, Creality Print, as long as you point it to the right location. Uh, so now what we have here is going to be our 3D print. It's gonna yell at me because it wants to have some sort of support on the inside, but we don't care because we know we're gonna insert something there. So all I'm gonna do is slice it. When we slice it, the first thing that we want to do is switch to G-code. I want to take a look at the G-code, and I want to move down until we get to the proper layer. Now, you'll notice in this case that as we're rotating this around, it looks to me like it wants to be on layer 72. So it's telling me layer 70 and not layer 80. Uh, this means that I could have potentially made a mistake or an error in my dimensions. So we do want to double check this to make sure that it's tall enough. So for that, I'm going to go back over to Fusion 
And I want to take a look at my design mistake. So for that, I want to go back over to Fusion and take a look at the design. We're going to go to Inspect, Measure, and just grab this vertical edge. You can see here that it's 12.32 millimeters and not 14.2. So this tells me that there is an error. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll back until we are right here. This one is likely not starting at the correct location. So it looks like it doesn't have an object selected and it should go up 14.2 millimeters. So it's always good for us to double check and understand exactly where those layer lines are supposed to be because it's very easy for us to make this mistake. So let's go ahead and stop everything, start from this top face, and then we're gonna go select our profiles and go up a distance of 14.2. As soon as we have 14.2 here, now we're in good shape. We can roll forward, check this, should only be two millimeters, and everything else should rebuild properly. So what I wanna do is I want to close Creality Print because it kind of gets angry if I try to open up multiple meshes in it, and we'll push this back through again. So once again, this is exactly why we did the math to start because we want to know what we should, we should expect to see layer 80, not layer 70. That tells me that I did something wrong. Now, if we go down and it's fine until that disappears, it says it's at layer 81. So if we go to layer 80 and we start to print through, everything looks okay. We're gonna go over to G code and we're gonna move to the next layer. You can see here that it lists layer 81 as layer 80 in the G code. So it's one number off because it would generally start at layer zero instead of layer one. The other thing that we need to make sure we understand when we're, when we're taking a look at this layer is where it's trying to 3D print. Uh, so as it prints the outside, it then moves to that inside edge, which it's gonna be printing on top of the nut, but we should be aware that this is not a great way for it to adhere. So we need to use something like glue on top of the nut when we put it in place. But everything else looks okay. So we're expecting it to stop at layer 80. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this to local and go ahead and just place it in the folder where I'm putting all these data sets, captive nut. I'm gonna open that location and then we can open it up in Notepad or um, Visual Studio or whatever you use to modify um, your specific G code. Once we have the G code open, uh, again, if you are using a Creality K1, K1 Max, then at the top, it looks like a bunch of gibberish. This is actually for the PNG image that you see, the thumbnail that you click on to start your print. Uh, and it also uses the thumbnail for a larger version for the uh, progress bar that happens during the print. So all that stuff at the top is, is kind of nothing that we want to mess with. We want to scroll down until we actually start to see the G code. Now, the first thing that we want to find is the word layer. So if we do uh, control F in here, again, you can use a text editor. You can use, uh, I'm using VS code. It's just what it opens up in default, but we want to look for the word layer. And then we see that the format here is layer colon, and we're going to type in 80. So layer 80 is where we identified where we should be seeing or we should have the pause. Now, depending on which printer you're using, you may find that you can just type in M0. That's the M code. Uh, so that's the machine code that is generally used for things like CNC mills to uh, start and stop the spindle and do all sorts of stuff. Lots of M codes are used inside of the G code for 3D printing. And the the Marlin firmware that the Creality K1 and K1 Max is based on um, should support M0. It doesn't, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but in some instances of other G codes, other printers, you can just type in M0. And you can even type in text, so you could say uh, click to resume, and that generally will pop up on the LCD screen if your printer has a screen, which pretty much all of them do. So that is one way that you can do it. You can find that documentation inside of the whatever firmware is used for your machine. And again, Marlin is used for the K1, K1 Max, 
but it doesn't support that for whatever reason. Now, the good news is all we have to do on these printers is type in the word pause. And when we type in the word pause, that's not only going to pause the print, but it's going to lower the bed and move the print head out of the way. Now you can position your print on the front of the bed to make this a bit easier, but it actually moves out of the way plenty fine for what we need to do. And that's it. That's all we need to do is just type in the word pause in all caps and it knows what to do. From here, all we need to do is save this and send it out to the 3D printer. I generally do this on a jump drive and take it over to the machine. You can also use the uh, sort, sort of Wi-Fi enabled Creality print and send it that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the printer and let's see how this works. So here we can see at the printer, what ends up happening is again, it pauses, it moves the bed down and the print head off to the side. Now, when this happens, it will start to cool off the nozzle and we would, as soon as we resume, it'll have the heat back up. So keep that in mind, the bed will stay up to temp, but the nozzle itself will start to cool off. So what we're gonna do here is add a little bit of glue to the top of the nut and simply drop it into place. Again, with that half a millimeter tolerance or that offset that we added, it drops in just fine. And then all we need to do is resume the print. Now, when it resumes, keep in mind, based on the height of your part, and the layer lines, there may be a small gap between where it's trying to print and your part. So even though we added glue, it's not really going to stick to the part. So this first layer back is going to be a little bit messy. Unless with your slicer, you can control the print going completely outside to inside. In the K1 software in the Creality Print, when you set it to outside to inside, it actually will print the outside profile, the inside ID here, and then it'll sort of fill in the middle. So unfortunately, it doesn't quite work, but it, it starts to resume the print and everything's fine. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the final result here. We can see that the nut is captured inside of the part just fine, and it works out well. It has enough of a tolerance that it allows the nut to float just a little bit, which makes it perfect. It doesn't have any problems here. Now, keep in mind that this is a sort of extreme example. Generally, you would be doing this with much smaller hardware, but this is just a good example so we can understand not only the layer lines, the tolerances, the values that we need to use. But generally, you would want to do this on things like M6, M8 nuts, something quite a bit smaller. They can be square, they can be hex. Uh, you can do this with the hot melt inserts as well, but generally that would be done after the fact. You can use it for magnets or hinges or whatever you want to embed into your 3D printed parts. Just remember that the to check your heights, check your layer lines, and make sure that you are printing at the right time. So if you have any questions on this or want to see something else in this sort of realm of 3D printing, then please leave a comment. If you like what you see here, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.